major explosions we've been talking about raised so many other questions about how, for one thing, the device has ended up um, in Hezbollah's hands. And now um, you, some people are talking about this after what we've seen this week is kind of supply chain warfare, right? We're joined by Brandon Daniels now as an expert on uh, supply chains, the CEO of the firm Exeter. You never thought you'd hear that, but that's the term, supply chain uh, warfare. I want to go to the New York Times, first of all, Brandon, on this story, which was interesting, how Israel built a modern-day Trojan horse, they wrote about this morning, exploding pagers, and the Israeli government did not tamper with the Hezbollah devices that exploded. Defense and intelligence officials say to the Times, it manufactured them, part of an elaborate ruse. So they said this whole thing, this company, which I guess was in Budapest, right, this, this thought this was like a legit company. No, this was a front all along, apparently, for Israeli intelligence. That was the only purpose. Um, what do you make of all of this? Well, Connell, uh, thank you again for having me on. The, the last time we talked, we talked about the individual components and pieces in a supply chain and how you might not have visibility to that, right? I mean, less than 30% of companies in our industrial base have visibility past their first tier into their supply chain. You know, when, when we first saw this issue happening uh, and we had identified that uh, BAC Consulting was the uh, firm that was at the top of this manufacturing chain, we went in and we looked at our systems to see whether or not in our 10 billion uh, commerce records, which are basically shipments across the globe, manufacturing records across the globe, whether or not we could determine where BAC was making these uh, pagers from. And they have no manufacturing footprint. Then we went and looked and we ran through our, uh, through our uh, artificial intelligence capability, a BAC business profile. Mm -hmm. And you, know, you found that there was only a business development manager available on LinkedIn. There was limited and very thin information on this company generally. And you would think that as you're doing business, as you're acquiring critical materials for, you know, uh, operations as sensitive and high risk as what Hezbollah would doing, they would be doing due diligence like this. But the fact is not even our own uh, government agencies, not right. even our own uh, U.S. companies are doing this kind of due diligence. In fact, in the COVID-19 response, uh, uh, Connell, we would see companies that were literally stood up overnight or were estheticians two weeks ago trying to sell us ventilators. And so this kind of activity is happening all over our supply chain. That's crazy chain. to me because, you know, the pagers themselves, as Bloomberg points out, these and the walkie-talkies, um, were the walkie-talkies especially, I think, were discontinued like a, dec there, a decade ago. So we've talked about this Japanese company, um, and then it, it goes through this, Hungarian company, but you, which you say had no footprint. I, I was surprised by that a little. I thought, you know, when you have a front like this, I thought they did some legit business. No, just to put up, that's what a front is, essentially. There was none of that? Or? So, so this is the thing, is everyone looks at the front end of a company. So do they have customers? And BAC did have customers. But the fact is, mm -hmm. if you just, if you can do an open source analysis on that company, which is what our artificial intelligence does, you can see that that company comes up with a number of flags, including uh, no CEO, no okay. real uh, corporate infrastructure. And then if you have the ability to map the multiple tiers of the supply chain, like these pagers, these walkie talkies have very clear um, what are called commercially off-the-shelf microelectronics in them, there was none of that materials going to BAC or any company below them, right? And so you could see that this company was a front. But the fact is we're not even requiring this kind of basic due diligence in our own corporations today, in our own supply chains today. This is the problem we're trying to help, you know, the U.S. federal government solve and even our weapon systems. It's an urgent crisis. Mm -hmm. As odd as it sounds to say this, you, you would think a terrorist organization, though, would do that type of due diligence. You know, seriously. <laughs> no, but they didn't. Yeah, no. You well, think. you you. You'd think you'd think uh, you know our military programs would be required to do this kind of due of diligence course. and today optional. Um, you'd think that our rail systems, our energy grid, would be required to do uh, this due diligence, and it really stops at the first tier: who they're buying from, right. who their contract manufacturers are using. There's no visibility, and I will tell you, I know for certain that Russia and China and other near peer adversaries yep. have specific bought companies and specifically implanted themselves into the supply chain and are engaged in this non-kinetic warfare.
Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.